prospective graduate students. My name is Susanna Tadero. I am a postdoc in Isaac Schwong's group at MIT. We're also nicknamed the Quanta Lab because we study trapped ion quantum information. And I'm here in bustling Kendall Square. with Jules, who is a graduate student in the Quanta group here. This is building 36, where our labs are located. It's located right between buildings 32, 34, and 26. This is our room temperature trapped ion quantum computing lab. And this is where we actually already have an operational ion trap. Broadly in this lab, we're looking at different types of new encodings for trapped ion quantum information. Traditionally in trapped ion quantum information, we've actually encoded the information either between two sublevels of the ground state of the ion or between the ground state and an excited state. And so what we're actually doing is that we are precisely controlling either the spin or the orbital state of the ion's valence electron. We can do that with a really high level of precision if we use lasers. So this is our laser setup. We use strontium-88, which is a really nice choice of, of ion species because all of its relevant transitions are either visible or infrared lasers, which are relatively broadly available compared to UV lasers. So this really nice blue here, that's at 461 nanometers, that's our photoionization laser. Uh, the purple that you can see is the 422 that we use for Doppler cooling, and there's actually another shade of purple on the table and that's another step of our photoionization. If we uh, pull back the curtain over here, you can see the ion trap itself. So the ions are actually trapped above that chip in a vacuum chamber here. And then we image the fluorescence of the ions through this big window. And we actually use that to detect the state of the ions as well. So let's go over to our ion control station. This is our main control setup, and this is really the station from where we are able to manipulate the ions. So we actually have an ion chain already trapped right here. So you can see there's three little bodies there, and we're imaging the ion fluorescence as I showed before. So as I said, we're working on new types of novel encoding for quantum information. One of those is that instead of looking at encoding the quantum information in the electronic states of the ion, we're actually going to use the actual motion of the ion in the trap itself. And this is a really natural option for trapped ions because ions react really strongly with electric fields. And so, just to demonstrate that, I can actually move these ions on scale of microns controllably, and all I'm doing is changing the electric fields that we're using to trap the ions, and we can move them back and forth. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to encode the quantum information in the harmonic oscillator states of the ion's motion in the harmonic oscillator of the trap itself. So if you remember from your quantum physics class, the uh, harmonic oscillator has infinite energy states. It's the harmonic oscillator ladder is what we'll call it. 
And so that means that because you basically have infinite states available instead of just one or two, you can do sort of more interesting types of algorithms with it. Uh, we're also looking at creating interesting non-classical states of the motion, like squeezed states. Basically, this precise motional control, it's a really exciting, huge new sandbox that we have available to us. And it's really one that hasn't been looked at uh, too much yet, so it's a really exciting position for us to find ourselves in. The other encoding that we're looking at in uh, this lab is going back to this encoding of the quantum information using the electronic state of the ion. But instead of using sublevels of the ground state, we're actually going to use sublevels of a metastable, long lived excited state sort of as a quasi ground state. And the nice thing about that is that it actually has different wavelengths and different levels that it interacts with. So we think that we would be able to actually use it for higher fidelity operations to perform better quantum gates. The nice thing about both of these projects is they're actually both at a pretty new, pretty young stage. So that's a really exciting place for a grad student to be in because if you joined the group, you would be able to actually help us set the direction of a lot of these experiments, and you would be able to see them through to what we think will be some really exciting results. Hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm a first year grad student in the Quanta group. I started this last summer with the Lincoln Lab team, and then I moved on campus and started projects this fall. I've already had the chance to work on a variety of interesting projects from atomic physics experiments to quantum computing theory and hashtag quantum engineering to horticulture. There are a lot of great opportunities in this lab and I hope you have the time to check them out. So, I hope you join us. Um, let's go over to the other lab where Jules is gonna be looking at a different, equally cool experiment. Hey Jules, what are you working on? Oh, hi. I'm just working on our new cryogenic apparatus. In this experiment, we use a pretty cool source of strontium atoms, which are cooled by this lovely blue light that you see here. This then bursts of atoms over into our main vacuum chamber, where we can then ionize and trap them in our trap, which is up here for now. Most atomic physics experiments require an ultra-high vacuum environment, which typically takes many weeks of baking and pumping to reach astronomically low pressure. AMO experiments will then remain closed for many years after they've been prepared. You'll notice that our experiment here is open to the atmosphere. But never fear, in about 24 hours we can cool down to 4 Kelvin, at which temperature nearly everything freezes and we're left with an ultra-high vacuum environment. This fast cycle time is nice for us because it allows us to do experiments with many different kinds of chips. One focus of our group is on the development of new technology to enable us to perform many common actions on chip. This is the primary work of our partner group at MIT Silicon Laboratory. Many members of the group at MIT and at Lincoln often find themselves working at both places, myself included. The environment at Lincoln is a nice complement to the work done at MIT. At Lincoln, most work is performed by very large teams of professional scientists and engineers, which are able to undertake very large projects that may not be feasible for small academic groups. A good example of this is a recent effort to construct a chip with integrated photonics embedded beneath the surface of the ion trap chip, which were used to precisely control the quantum state of an ion trapped above the surface. We recently put out a paper about this result, result earlier this year. This is the result of the combined work of nearly 20 people. At MIT, we're free to pursue more open-ended problems, like the novel encoding schemes that Susanna told you about, and follow our interests wherever they take us. In my time at MIT, I've been able to spend time learning about using FPGAs to make closed-loop control servos for locking lasers, while learning how to design voltage sources for precisely controlling the position of trapped ions. It's up to you to decide whatever balance of academics and industry works best. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tour of quantum computing research at MIT. Thanks for taking the time to check us out and consider our group. Well, it's about time for me to catch my train. Stay safe out there.
My name is Jeremy Sage, and I approve this message. <laughs>